Welcome to the podcast that is designed to fuel your success in selling technology solutions. I'm your host, Josh Lopresto, SVP of Sales Engineering at Tolaris, and this is Next Level Biz Tech. All right, everybody, today we're back here, as you can see, with a special guest, Mr. Shane Speakman, VP of the UCAS practice at Tolaris. Uh, Shane, thanks so much for uh, agreeing to come back. Yes. To the podcast. Yes, thank you. Shane, uh, Shane was guest number one on the podcast. So when we had no plan, no goals, no whatever, and we just kind of winged it, here we are back coming up on 50 episodes. So appreciate you. And we're back here in the studio, Studio 19 in Utah. So uh, excited to jump in, man. Yeah, thanks. Congrats on the success. It's been uh, really fun to hear about your different guests. Yeah, thanks. It's fun. It's, it's, you know, it's been so cool to just learn so much about people that you know, we, we thought we knew a lot about. Uh, i.e. your illustrious scrapbooking oh, career. And there we go, and where, there it is. <laughs> where it all started. That's right. <laughs> but today we're not talking scrapbooking. Uh, if people want to know about your career back in the scrapbooking days and, and where your, your awesome path has gotten you to, they can go back and listen to episode number one on that. But uh, you know, let's, let's remind everybody though of, is this the path that you set out to, right? When, when did it really click for you? When did you know this technology area, this space was the path for yeah. you? Maybe let's start it off there. So actually, let's go, let's go back to scrapbooking, which is I, I sold my company in my late 20s and moved into a little nicer neighborhood. And it just so happened that my neighbor owned a telecom company. And as we became friends and worked out and vacationed, he said, hey, why don't you come lead my sales organization and I'll give you a piece of the company. And I said, I don't know anything about telecom. He said, that's all right, it's easy. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, my thought process was I saw that uh, the industry that I had invested in was starting to die. It was, it was turning digital. And as I looked forward towards telecommunications and the cloud services that were coming, I thought, oh, here, here's, here's a, a long-term play. And so uh, as we look at the ebb and flow, whether it's through uh, the macroeconomics or microeconomics uh, here locally, it's been a, a fantastic industry. And so for me, it was really about longevity, which is obviously proven to be that uh, the internet and communicating is not exactly a fad. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to stay. Uh, and and speaking of fads, not not a fad. Who knows? The topic of today that we're talking about is Microsoft Teams. Is it the right fit? I mean, there was a period where where we went through where that was just every other word that we said was Microsoft Teams, and so so that's the point that I want to lay out of this podcast is. We're going to dial in as we go through this talk track of the fact of, is Microsoft Teams always the right fit? Rhetorical, but we're going to end it and we're going to answer it uh, and, and solve that as we kind of go through this. So talking about that, uh, I want to see what, what are you seeing, right? It's yeah. been a while since you've been on. What have you seen with customers that are moving to Teams? Is it working? What are they struggling with? We're coming out of obviously all the pandemic stuff and, and that has settled down, but, but what, you know, what's your thoughts there? You know, a lot's actually changed since last time we talked about Microsoft Teams. And uh, the series that we did early on, uh, I think it was filled with some ambiguity as to what Teams ultimately would become, how much of the industry would take over. Uh, what, what's really interesting is uh, Gartner just released its uh, Magic Quadrant for UC suppliers, and Microsoft, Te Microsoft Teams was, was noted as the leader. And so uh, not only has it proven to be a... Uh, a good stable platform, it's, it's also becoming more feature rich with uh, better integration. So certainly, especially as we talk with suppliers in our portfolio, uh, we are more cognizant of the fact that this is, this is certainly a, an important player. Uh, as I spoke with one of the Gartner analysts last year, he indicated that he thought that uh, this would be 25% of the market. And we're seeing, if you look at those monthly active users in 2020, of course, there was a huge bump, right? Uh, I think we saw an increase of about 20 million users as people went to work from home. But that was really only from about 44 million up to roughly 75 million. And now we're approaching that 300 million month monthly active user mar uh, mark. So with that increase of adoption, clearly we're seeing more innovation. Uh, not just with Microsoft Teams, but with third-party suppliers integrating into that. And uh, we, we've seen the advent of Operator Connect, which I'm sure we'll talk about, but uh, certainly it's it's growing and it's changing, becoming more robust. So so we've established that it's, it is really kind of what we talked about and what we set out, that it would, it would proliferate and it would just kind of expand into the broader marketplace and people using it, whether we thought it was a good fit or not. But what do you see from a struggles perspective? What, let's, let's talk about the bad, 
uh, people that maybe have moved or thinking about, you know, move part of their things into it, is it working? And if it's not, what are they struggling with? Sure, right. Uh, of course, with anything, the answer is it depends. Uh, what we have found, of course, is that an IT department or an, a strategy would be, let's let's put everything Microsoft on uh, in our stack. And so we're finding that uh, with that natural integration, especially into uh, Office 365, it becomes a matter of even if the tool that has potentially PSTN connectivity through licensing uh, is available readily in this platform, does it have the features, does it have the AI, <clears throat> does it have the uh, re really the integrations to make the most efficient workspace? And the, the answer is not all the time. And so if a company has deployed Teams, is using Teams, it may be sufficient for a lot of users, but it's not necessarily changing the game. And when we look at innovation in the industry, it's somewhat lagging. Which is, which is natural and to be expected. Uh, so where is it not working? Well, it's, it's certainly not working if a company is looking to change customer experience through technology with a communications platform. Uh, the, other, the other areas it's not working would be in that, uh, look, it, it can get really expensive really fast. I, I was actually talking with a customer who had slowly bolted on the different a la carte options from Teams, and then as they audited their their bill they thought oh my gosh we are spending so much money on teams when in reality if they had gone with a direct routing partner or even with a third-party pbx vendor they could have bifurcated some of those licenses to say we need some basic basic subscriptions here and we need some maybe more advanced features over here and ultimately could have saved money you know, you, um you bring up a good point uh with with it seems like i, I care more about what the fed chair does and what the economic headwinds are that, that face the broader markets than I ever did ever before earlier in my life, probably more than I even like to care about now. But I think it's important because we, we look at those things and we have to determine how are they going to affect business? How are our partners going to be able to approach or how are they going to have to approach their customers differently? Is it going to promote a, a sea of digital transformation where people are a little more willing to spend money? Or is it going to promote a time where people need to examine their costs and figure out where they're spending, how they're spending. And I think that's what's great about this is that, you know, for our partners that are listening to this, they've always been such incredible entrepreneurs and just figuring out a way to be successful. And during the periods of the bull run, it's let's do digital transformation, let's modernize, let's accelerate. And now maybe it's a little more of, to your point, let's look at where we've spent money in the last couple of years is it making us profitable? Is it too high of a cost? Is there a better way, a more efficient way for us to kind of do things? And so you, I think you bring up a great point that our partners have to be aware of is, you know, if you frame that into a question, what's that, what's that question that the partners that know their customers have moved a little bit into teams, are not sure about it, and if they need a reason to reapproach them, what's the question that you give them to ask related to kind of what you just mentioned? So I, I, I would say... There are a few different considerations. Uh, when we talk about, let me take a step back. When we talk about UCAS, uh, we're really talking about a collaboration suite. And I think inherently we go to voice as uh, kind of the default. And when we talk about Microsoft Teams, we're also talking about different types of communications. And so uh, ultimately what, what we're really struggling with, I would say with Teams, would be those integrations into the disparate systems. And so that's one of the first questions which would, would surround what are, what are the other technologies that you're, you're utilizing? Which, which of these systems would you ultimately want to integrate into a communications platform? We find that uh, a, lot of, a lot of users are buying a bolt-on messaging platform uh, or they're, they don't have, again, that AI embedded into Teams, and so they're using a third-party AI platform for transcription service, or uh, they, they aren't integrating with their inventory management system, which you wouldn't think would be a, necessarily an integration into communications, but as you look at the ability to receive a message, have it dip into that inventory management system, and then respond with some really good output, it will increase that customer experience and unfortunately, our partners, I think, at, at least a, a large subset of them, have come from that CLEC world, just like I did, where it's, all right, we're going to do key emulation, 
we're going to just move this exact PBX into a cloud environment. And as we've moved or progressed forward, I, th I think we've had to really change the mindset to we're going to be a consultant and now show you what the art of the possible is. And uh, so those questions will vary based on the customer's needs or their appetite for innovation as well. Fair, fair. Uh, good stuff. Okay, uh, we're going to get into trends on deals here in just a second. Maybe we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Operator Connect. We'll talk about direct routing. Uh, what, what are you seeing uh, before we before we kind of jump into that, right? It, it, some of these folks are being faced with modernization. They're, they're trying to evolve their business. And I think we talked about that just a minute ago, whether they're transforming or they're trying to save costs, right? The track is going to be a little different. But uh, what are you seeing a lot of the asks and the trends from partners, right? Is it, is it do I need to care about Operator Connect? Is it what are the differences between this and direct routing? And, and, and before we answer that, if we back up to when we talked about this last time, we were just trying to cipher through what truly being a Microsoft partner was. And we thought everybody said they could do Direct Connect, and then we found out, oh, Direct Connect really meant if you have the Azure certified session border controllers and the Microsoft right. ones that are on their approved list and where those are and the adjacent in, in Azure, you know, all of that good stuff, versus now Operator Connect changes that. So a lot of kind of loading that question up, but what are you seeing out of that? Trends and, and differences around those two Microsoft offerings? So uh, I would say most immediately, the last time we talked, I think there was still some ambiguity around the architecture of going through call to teams. And uh, we, we saw that a lot of third party PBX vendors were kind of masking the fact that they were using uh, this, this third party to actually connect to one of those approved SBCs within Microsoft. Um, call to teams was acquired by Cunify, which is now Destiny. Um, which is a Brussels-based company. I don't think there's any real concern around their partnership, but uh, ultimately what that has done is it, it, it has led to more innovation. And we look at uh, Operator Connect, for example, where now third-party uh, suppliers are embedding their technology into the Azure uh, ecosystem. And so it's, uh, it's now an app that you can self-consume through their marketplace. And so when you, when you look at the experience we're finding that whether it's direct routing or if it's through call to teams, um, even Operator Connect, uh, there are some minute differences. And the, the innovation is really in how easy is it to now provision? And that's part of Operator Connect. Um, what, what does the redundancy look like? And uh, clearly we've had, we've had some Microsoft team outages. And so uh, I think ultimately the real goal here, if I'm a partner looking at an environment that uh, has teams, which is probable, it's do we want to rip and replace or do we want to find a solution that hits all of their needs and then incorporates the core technology that they've already invested in? Yeah, great, great point. And it, just from what it seems like, at least from an engineering mindset, I don't see a lot of revolutionary things out of Operator Connect that they couldn't do before, right? To your point, yeah. maybe it makes it a little more intuitive for people to turn up. Maybe it brings some more part, uh, you know, supplier vendor partners into the ecosystem. But again, it's just it, it does follow into the talk track of what you and I always used to talk about was that Microsoft will continue to iterate. They will continue to be partner friendly, but we just don't know what that next product is going to be. But it seems that. Operator Connect has just been an iterative product, an iterative development that makes it a little more easy uh, to, or a little easier to, to, to integrate with Microsoft in that uh, as they go forward. Yeah, uh, there, was a, there was some concern around the management or the provisioning through Microsoft PowerShell, mm -hmm. right? It can be laborious. And if you don't have somebody who's uh, certified or uh, at least have, has gone through the process, it, it can really be a challenge for, for companies to migrate. Uh, what's really great about our full service providers is that you have that support and then you can circumvent that process by utilizing a really good operations team who clearly has experience in, uh, in this. Yeah, good point. All right, uh, let's talk about successful partners. Uh, we, you know, we, we talked about some of the pain points and remember the, the, the goal of this track and the title of this track is, is teams always a fit, right? And, and I think we're addressing things that elude to help you decide one way or the other if, if it is and when it is. Uh, successful partners that are out there that are, that are navigating this talk track, what are they doing? 
What are they developing expertise wise? What are you teaching and training? Uh, what, what do you want people to glean from that to continue to be more successful in this area as it evolves? Uh, I have two thoughts on this. Number one, if, if there's an environment with teams where they have set that standard, I, I think it is uh, unwise to try and uproot that. It is, okay, embrace the core of the technology and let's add to it, let's enhance what they have. Uh, secondly, I would say if you're not taking the consultative approach and showing the art of the possible or using maybe use cases or examples from our solutions architects and opportunities that uh, we've been involved in to create new workflows, customer experience, uh, communication possibilities, then you're not doing your job. And those successful, those really successful partners have looked at how those different either interactions take place with different uh, different servers or technologies, even uh, software such as uh, Marketo or Eloqua, what they're doing is looking at that saying, okay, there's an opportunity here and I'm going to show you how to make for a better customer experience and this is the ROI that you can expect. Good. Um, let's, let's go into examples. So, what I think is always interesting when we talk about this is that sometimes when the deals come to us or the opportunities come to us, it, what we end up selling doesn't always look like what it came to us originally. Like certainly, you know, I hope when, when our team gets involved, when you get involved, we, we help a partner multiply that opportunity or improve the close ratio or, you know, any of those kind of metrics, right? We uncover more things. Would love to hear about kind of an example where, you know, an opportunity that you saw what it looked like, what the problems were, what were some of the pieces that, that you you realized that we could help with and uncover, and you know what was the end result in that? Sure. You and I have kind of joked about that uh, most, most conversations start with Microsoft Teams, and uh, it's amazing how the percentage of Microsoft Teams deployment when we're done with that consultative approach is really kind of low, and so, uh, you know, I think at the beginning, we, we kind of wondered, is this going to be every conversation? Well, it certainly starts with every conversation. Uh, one in particular that I would say uh, was uh, impactful, and maybe it's a, a very typical for a partner, would be that, look, I've, I've got Microsoft Teams in a, in a few different uh, deployments here. Um, I've got a PBX as well, and so I've, I have some tools that I'm using outside of Microsoft Teams. Uh, we're still seeing that there are a lot of Zoom licenses being utilized for, for video. They may even have Slack for, for a messaging platform. And so a typical opportunity would be one, and this is one that I think that uh, we saw a lot of success, especially with that uh, horizontal or, or looking in the different technology stacks to be able to in incorporate different practices. But uh, it's one where you say, okay, look, do you want to stay in teams? And in this situation, they said, look, yeah, we've invested in teams and we don't want to deviate from that. And so what we did is looked at the other technologies that they had deployed and said, all right, if we're going to do this, let's, uh, first of all, let's incorporate new technology from a PBX vendor, throw that into teams. And uh, there are ways now to circum circumvent that $8 PBX charge by throwing a, na a dialer natively into the uh, into the app, which which is fantastic, right? It saves you money there. It gives you additional features. It starts to introduce the AI and uh, change the workflow. Not only that, but it then also brings in the messaging. We find that uh, just like uh, just like some video platforms, we, we there's a propensity to stick with whichever chat feature that uh, that your organization uses. So changing that can be somewhat difficult. So when we integrate that into Teams, we find that now you don't have to consume quite as much of that uh, a la carte stack. And then in, in this example, what happened is we ended up actually saving them money through that uh, integration, but then also giving them the additional feature sets. Love it. Uh, yeah, I think we just, you know, we have to make that determination of, you know, is this a fit? We talk a lot about some of our UC providers like a dial pad, right, that have incredible artificial intelligence. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not going to steal your thunder when we talk about kind of the future, but it, it either seems like it goes that route or it goes the route of somebody like, uh, you know, uh, that's on the forefront of the cutting edge of what being adjacent to what Microsoft is doing, like an SCB Global where they're yeah. in the Azure Pops, they're, they're embracing and, and, and training and teaching and managing Operator Connect and Anywhere 365 and all of these things. And so good example, uh, I think it, it just builds on what we've talked about of, we've got to understand where they're at, 
Are we ripping? Are we integrating? Are we growing? Do we need help managing? Do they lack the people to do it? All that good stuff. Okay, great stuff, great examples. Uh, last couple thoughts here as we wrap this up. When you look at the future, and maybe this is 12 months out, maybe this is a little bit further, what are some of the trends that you want our partners to be aware of? And, and really, maybe what is that talk track? What are some of those questions that you want to leave them with? So I think that uh, when you look at the, based on my experience, when you look at the innovation that's occurred in this industry over the last even five years, it's sexy, right? Dial tone, ah, maybe not so sexy. We, we expect that it's good. When you look at Microsoft calling plans, whether it's their, you know, the, this, their domestic, international, or pays you get, all right, we're, we're, we're not, nobody's doing high fives over, over anything like this. But when we start talking about how to really impact customer experience or employee experience using this new technology to mitigate churn in your, in, in your workforce, uh, to, to better manage a remote workforce, to utilize a messaging platform that allows for better communication, especially with a, uh, a generation that expects immediate results from a, from a Google search or an immediate response uh, for any type of uh, information inquiry. Uh, it becomes really fun. It becomes uh, really transformative. And so, yeah, you're right. When, when, you, when you talk about AI in general, uh, I, I think there are a lot of companies innovating really cool new technology that really changes the way that, uh, that we even think about how we operate. Uh, if I were to give you an example, <clears throat> if, if I were able to, uh, and let me back up and say, the CPaaS community, which is uh, growing rapidly, is really starting to innovate and bolt on different features into UC platforms that allow for really cool messaging and geolocating in these uh, short codes. And you start talking about what we have seen on the periphery as being this almost rogue platform that was de developer driven. And you start to incorporate that into a team's environment. Now, now you've really got something. Um, so when, when, when I see the ability for uh, my son to be able to text his, uh, his favorite shoe store and have that come back with, yep, here's a link and here's the shoe that's available and here's the price and would you like to put this on hold? But because he has the app, when he walks through the mall, that's able to geolocate him to shoot him out a message that says, hey, I, we can give you 10% off if you shop mm -hmm. within the next hour. Uh, now, now that's transformative. And that all goes back to and revolves around this communications platform, which you can use Teams as a, as a, as a basic platform that everything is enhanced on. Um, well, also, when you start looking at natural language processing, uh, the transcription service, uh, transcription service in itself is cool. It's becoming really good, and it will be it will become better. But it's how you use that data, right? How an organization is able to start to cache all of it and then make really good assumptions about that data, uh, looking at the uh, the algorithms that say, "Hey, we're predicting that this conversation is going south," and so w here's a suggestion based on success that was indicated in in an aggregate of a thousand different calls or a million different calls over here. Uh, it, it's just a very different way of looking at communication. And I think that we will see more of that. The expectation will be that as a workflow and as an, an employee experience, if I want to message one of my colleagues and say, hey, what's going on with this deal over here? And the AI can pick it up and say, hey, I, I noticed that you asked about this deal. Here's a suggested link to your sales force. Or here, here's, a, here's a link that shows that this are actually hit your BI tool because of an inquiry into your, your data system over here, and it's already sold. Now we've really uh, become more efficient, and it's, uh, yeah, it makes for a cool experience. Yeah, uh, great. There's like 16 great golden nuggets in there. I think what I hope the partners walk away with is, you know, on the surface, you might feel like, yeah, but everybody has a collaboration tool, or they, I think my, car, my, my customer just bought something. But if you don't ask yourself those types of experiences and put yourself in the role of a consumer that is buying a like product at, at a competitor, you have to take that stuff back, I think, and, and, and ask yourself, is my business, is my customer able to do these things and able to innovate in a way that 
you know, to your point, when dial tone was just not the sexiest thing, it was a necessary commodity and IT was a cost. Now the technology space and the collaboration space has to be looked at as a way for these businesses to modernize and capture revenue that they just haven't thought of. So I think our, as our partners are not just thinking at this as a, well, have I sold them this? Have I not sold them this yet? It's how can I help my customers and my prospects modernize the way that they're generating revenue, the way that they're building their own brand to your point, right? Uh, now they can communicate with a demographic that they just couldn't communicate before. And if they're not able to do that, to your point, they're just missing the mark and somebody else is going to do it. Right. It, the innovation is certainly changing the way that uh, that we operate. Uh, I'm a truck guy. And when I when I think about my old diesel truck, look, it it does the same thing that my new truck does. It, it hauls my trailer. But now my my new truck is a it's a beacon of technology, right? When you when you look at the Bluetooth and you look at the the navigation and you look at the uh, the uh, internet that I connect to in my own in my own truck, I never had that expectation before. I just needed something to tow my trailer, and uh, I think it's the same here, where we we should expect, and as partners, we ought to be expecting that uh, we we bring that new technology and that uh, that advice so that we're seen as that long-term consultant. Great stuff. Okay, I think we wrapped it up. Uh, I, I hope people listen to this and, and gives them a little bit of a gleam of when and if Microsoft Teams is really a fit. Uh, I think you did a great job of providing us some examples of how to talk through that. So Shane Speakman, appreciate you coming on, man. Good to have you on again. Thanks, bro. Okay, everybody, that wraps us up. I'm your host, Josh Lopresto, SVP of Sales Engineering here at Tolaris, wrapping up with Shane Speakman, VP of the UCAS Practice. Until next time. Next Level BizTech has been a production of Tolaris Studio 19. Please visit tolaris.com for more information.